cave. Now in today's video is one that I hopefully help you out in regards to what controllers work with the Steam Deck and how to connect each of them. In a later video I will be doing a more in-depth look at configuring the controllers and how to do it but in this video it's just the first steps on how to get them connected to the Steam Deck so you can use them in-game with some of the controllers having immediate advantages and some having disadvantages. I have timestamped each one so you can just skip to controller that applies to you the most. Like I said, I hope you find this useful and if you do, please do hit the like and consider subscribing. It will help me grow and help me put out more content. I really appreciate it. Just a few things to note before we begin with the first controller. All of the controllers in this video I have tested in various Steam games so I know that they all work fine out of the box. All of them will be connected via Bluetooth apart from one of them which is the official Steam controller which I'll also be using the included dongle. For each controller I have tested the A, B, X, Y buttons, bumpers, triggers etc out of the box and they all work as expected and even better in some cases as the face buttons get swapped automatically so it replicates what you see on the controller. But if you need to any of the controllers can be mapped easily in the settings for each game. To change this controller settings in the game, just click the Steam button on the controller, usually the main PlayStation, Xbox or Switch Home button, or click the Steam button on your Steam Deck, then navigate right and right again and then down to select Edit Controller. Then it's here, you can edit everything, but as I said, I'll be going through this in much more detail in a later video. All of the controllers in this video work as of August 2022, with new ones added to the Steam Deck every so often. If there is a controller that you want to use that's currently unsupported, just wait out as it may get added at some point. Also, this isn't a full list as there are other controllers out there that work with the Steam Deck. This is just a list of all of the controllers that I personally own. Finally, as I was testing, I had to leave Bluetooth on. I didn't notice any reduction in battery life. It was kind of hard to get a 100% accurate result due to the difference in battery life between games. So I summarized it up as not really noticing Bluetooth was on or off in terms of how long I could play it for. So let's crack on with the pairing. Now it's obvious, but you will need to activate Bluetooth on your Steam Deck before pairing. You do this by clicking the Steam button and down to settings and then Bluetooth and just make sure that the Bluetooth toggle is set to on. Once you've done that, it's time to prepare your controller and get it connected. The first controller is probably the most obvious and that is the official Steam controller. This is the one on the list that connects via USB dongle as well as Bluetooth. But if you do want to use it via Bluetooth, you will need to make sure you're on the latest firmware. So just update it. So plug it into your PC, fire up the Steam client and update the controller to the BLE firmware. Once that's done, we can connect it. I found the best way to get this to work reliably is by turning the controller off before trying to connect it. You do this by holding down the Steam button until the light goes out. Once it's off, you can start the process to connect via Bluetooth or via the dongle. For Bluetooth, hold the Steam button and the Y until it beeps and vibrates. And then after a few seconds, it will show up in the menu as Steam Controller. Click that and the controller will connect automatically. Now for the dongle, you don't need anything special in the menus, not even have Bluetooth activated. Just plug it into a spare USB. Again, turn the controller off by holding the Steam button so that the Steam button light is off. This time, hold the Steam button and A to switch to dongle mode. The controller then beeps and vibrates and gets recognized. I've tried connecting to both ways and I haven't noticed to the eye any lag comparing the dongle to Bluetooth. So I'd suggest just using the way that's more convenient for you. Next up is the DualSense controller for your PS5. To do this, hold down the share button and then simultaneously hold down the PS button and wait for it to flash blue intermittently. Once this is done, it will appear in the menus as a wireless controller. Click on that and after a few seconds, it will have connected. The Steam logo in the bottom left will show as the PS logo and all the button prompts will default to PS button icons when using it, just to make life that touch more convenient. Next up is a DualShock 4. This process is very similar. Hold down the share button and simultaneously hold down the PS button and wait for the front light bar to flash blue intermittently. Once this is done, it will appear in the menus as a wireless controller. Click on that and after a few seconds, it will have connected. Next is the 8-Bit Do Pro 2 controller. Firstly, on the back, flip the switch over to X. This means that the Steam Deck will automatically do all the leg work for you after pairing. Next, turn it on by pressing the plus start button then hold down the pair button at the back till the four LEDs at the bottom start to flash. In the Steam Deck, you will see 8-Bit Do Pro 2 as a controller. Click on it and it will pair automatically. One great thing to note is that the Pro 2's profiles still work. So if you set up one of the three profiles on a PC or a mobile app, then these will be transferred over to use on the Steam Deck. I have both paddles on the back mapped to left and right bumper as you can see, and they work perfectly. To swap between all the profiles, simple case of pressing the profile button on the front. 
Next up is the first of four Xbox controllers. This one is the Xbox Elite 2 controller. Start by turning on by pressing the Xbox button, then holding the pair button at the back until the Xbox button flashes faster. Then on the Steam Deck, it says Xbox Wireless Controller. Click that and wait for it to pair. The Xbox controllers are the same layout as the Steam Deck, so you won't be too confusing with the logo and buttons all changing to reflect the Xbox buttons. The Elite Controller also has paddles and they are all assignable on the Xbox and that will be reflected on the Steam Deck. As you can see, I have assigned the paddles to A, B, L, B and R, B and they work perfect. If you want to change them, you will need to do this when connecting the controller to your Xbox and changing them there. 6, 7 and 8 are all exactly the same process, so they're pretty much the same controller. Here we have a Series X controller, a Series S controller and an Xbox One controller. They all work the same, hit the Xbox button on the front and centre and then hold the pairing button until the LED flashes. You'll then see them on your Steam Deck as appear as Xbox Wireless Controller. Select that and then it pairs. Ninth up is the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. To pair this, just hold the pairing button at the back until you see the four LEDs flash at the bottom. After a few seconds, it pops up in the Steam Deck as Pro Controller. Once it's connected, the buttons will be mapped as per the controller. A on the Pro Controller acts as A, where B is on the Steam Deck and vice versa for B, X and Y. But you can change this if you need to, just done the menu under controllers, select on or off for the setting of Use Nintendo Button Layout. Number 10 is a controller I've not seen much coverage of, and that is this, the excellent Pro Controller alternative from Power A, the enhanced wireless controller. To set it up into pairing mode, simply hold the pairing button down on the back for a few seconds through the LED flash. Then on the Steam Deck, it will show up as LIC or Lick Pro Controller. Click that and it pairs and it will be mapped as the same as the Switch Pro Controller. A on the Power A acts as A, even though it is in the B position of the Steam Deck. A nice touch is that paddles on the rear of the Power A also work as intended. Just hold the function button till the white LED flashes, press any button, then one of the bumpers or triggers and select a paddle and it maps it on the fly. Finally, we have three pairs of Joy-Cons. These are the Nixie Joy-Cons that I use 99% of the time when I use handheld on my Nintendo Switch. They do, however, need to be paired individually but it's not too much bother as they can be used in the regular handheld position without having to resort to using them individually, using them in the horizontal mode. So grab a Nixie Joy-Con and start with the right one. On the side, in between the SR and SL button, hold down the pairing button till you see the LEDs flash rapidly. Then on the Steam Deck, you'll see Joy-Con R. Click that and it pairs. Next up, do the same thing with the left one, but this time it shows up as Joy-Con L. Once they are both paired, they act like a controller. The beauty of these is they don't need a switch to charge up. They have separate USB ports on each one. Just plug in a cable and they will charge up just fine. Official Joy-Cons next, and these don't work as well as the Nixies, but they do still work. On the side between the SR and the SL buttons, hold the pairing button till you see the LEDs flash rapidly. Then on the Steam Deck, you'll see Joy-Con R. Click that and it pairs. Next up, same thing with the left one, but this time it shows up as Joy-Con L. Once they are both paired, then you have to use them individually on their side. Finally, it's these. These are the official NES controllers that can be bought via Nintendo Online users for use on their Nintendo Switch. As per the official Joy-Con, they need to be paired individually and will be used individually, not as a pair like the Nixie Joy-Cons from earlier. On the side, in between SR and SL buttons, hold down the pairing button to see the LEDs flash rapidly. Then on the Steam Deck, you'll see NES Controller R. Click that and it pairs. Next up, same with the left one, but this time it shows up NES Controller L. And once they are both paired, they can be used individually on their side. These do have a few uses, but even less as these Joy-Cons, there are only two buttons, A and B, which could be okay for certain games, especially the retro NES games on emulation. And also to charge them, you will need to plug them into a Nintendo Switch. That's it then, if you've got this far, thank you very much. Secondly, if there's any controller you'd like me to test to see if it works, then please do comment below. If you're having with trouble with any, then do let me know and I'll see how it compares to how I do it and I'll see if I can help you out. Do let me know which controller you use and why. For me, it's the DualShock 4 due to the mouse controller, but that's just my personal preference. Let me know down in the comments below. I hope this video has been useful to you. As I said, please do like, please do subscribe, and until the next video, bye-bye.